So my little Chilean guava plant in the garden has produced enough of a crop this year to actually do something in earnest with the fruits. While we're down there actually let's have a look. The loquat plant that I planted several years ago and potted up this year is doing really well. Now it's outdoors and it's in a larger pot. Anyway, so I've got this bowl of Chilean guava fruits and they're funny little things really. Let's just have a quick look at them. So they look a little bit like a tiny apple with this little star shaped structure on the end here and the stalk doesn't come off all that easily without tearing the fruit. So inside they look very much like a tiny apple even though they're not closely related to apples. The texture is a lot like soft apple. The flavour They have a flavour all of their own, which is slightly spicy, kind of a little bit of a blend of strawberry, banana, melon, maybe even a bit of citrus or something in there. I think I'm going to make strudel. So first thing is to wash these, pick them over, destalk them, and then we'll prepare these and some other fruits. So there will be a few that have got a wormhole in them or something like that. So I'm just going to pick them over carefully. I've got two. Um, destalk them all anyway. So this part is a bit laborious but it doesn't involve unfortunately examining every single one of these by hand. Now I did leave these till the very last minute to pick them this year and some of them were already falling off of the bush and that's a good way to gauge that they are ready for picking is when they start actually falling off. And so that's, uh, I've been quite diligent with washing these. I wouldn't normally be quite so fussed with something that I'm picking straight off the bush. But a few of these did fall on the ground as I was picking and I picked them up off the ground. So I've given these a good wash. Yeah, so examples like that. Something's been out that and that's no good. Okay, so that's my prepared chili and guavas, that's not going to be enough to fill a strudel. So I've got a few nice apples and a pear. Now these apples are quite ripe. They've been in store since they were picked and they're actually a little bit too far gone for just eating. They've, they've got a little bit of softness to them but they're russet apples and they need to be stored like that to give them the real sweetness that you get from a russet apple. So these will be perfect for what we want to do here. So I'm going to chop up these apples, squirt on a little bit of lemon juice just to stop them going brown. This pan's not the one I replaced the handle, but you can see this is one that's going to need a replacement fairly soon. This is from the same set, but yeah, this one, probably next candidate for upgrading. And I'm just going to cut these apples into pieces that are kind of the same size as the guavas. Just to give the thing a fairly uniform texture. And whilst these russet apples are really soft, that's not an apple that most people would find acceptable to eat. Wow, so, so sweet. And I find that russet apples have a, a very complex flavor with notes of pear and sometimes citrusy sort of flavors in them as well. I'd much prefer the flavour of a russet apple to a lot of, well, more crisp apples. These have gone over, definitely, but they'll be just fine for cooking. So a lot of people like a crisp apple and I just find that hurts my teeth when I bite into it. I uh, would much rather have not a, not a mushy apple and not a woolly apple, but something softer and with a more developed flavour. That's just my personal preference. Okay, just going to get a bit of lemon juice on there, just to stop that from going brown too much. Now pears don't have so much of a core as apples do, and so in order to avoid wasting too much of it, I'm just going to quarter them like that and then just take a little sliver out in the middle like that. Don't even 
need to go that far up actually. Just a little sliver out like that, and that's all we need to do. In case you can hear a pattering sound in the background, it is still raining here. And I'm going to cook this down just a tiny bit without sugar. Then I'm going to taste it and only sweeten strictly as much as it requires. And just to stop that burning, the tiniest little splash of water, that's about a couple of teaspoons. You don't need more than that. All right, lid on for probably two minutes. All right, well, that's been just cooking for a minute now and we can already see the fruits just starting to break down a little bit but that's not a problem I'm taking the lid off now because I actually want to drive off some of the moisture because this is going to go inside pastry and we don't want that pastry to be soggy and now is a good time to taste so I'll try and get a bit of pear apple and I think that's pear apple and Chili and guava, let's give that a taste. Mm, actually really sweet already. It is gonna need a tiny bit of sugar. So not much, just probably about a heaped tablespoonful of sugar, and that'll do. And then for spice, a lot of people would put cinnamon with apples, and that's fine, that's a valid choice, it's a lovely choice actually, or cloves, also good. My favourite for apple, and especially apple and pear, is star anise. I find that there's something about the flavour of star anise that goes really, really well, especially with pear. So, what's that, about a quarter of a teaspoonful? I won't put any more than that in there, because otherwise it will just overpower these fruits. It's there, really, as an adjunct to these fruits, and just to enhance them. There's something about star anise that combines incredibly well with pear and makes the pears taste more like pears, oddly enough. Right, that is all the cooking that needs because it's still gonna be baked inside the pie. So I'm gonna leave that open so that more moisture will leave it. Let's get the pastry ready. Okay, so pastry. You can make puff pastry. I've made puff pastry before. It's not that hard, but it's a big time suck. So. I'm just going to use prepared pastry that I bought at Lidl. And this is actually already ready rolled and it comes with a piece of paper to bake it on as well. What could be simpler? Okay, so we're going to make a strudel and it's got to fit in this tray. So we'll be mindful of that while we're preparing here. So we're going to cut diagonally into this corner and the same on the other side. So let's go there. Okay, and then we're gonna cut centimeter strips along there. It's important to get them kind of consistent because we'd need to get the same number of strips on both sides. So same number of cuts on both sides. So now the fruit mix, which has had a chance to cool down a little bit, I'm just gonna distribute that along the middle. It smells pretty amazing actually at this point. Although I got a feeling that cooking these chili and guavas is not the best way to deal with them. They probably will lose some of their aroma in this process. So that looks about evenly spread. So now we're going to start at this end and fold those two in. I don't know if this is the right way to do this, but we're just going to wing it and see what happens. And alternate sides, should have tucked that under a bit more, alternate sides, just fold them over like this and lock in the previous one with the current one, lifting up the edges a little bit as we go. Now this will leak out as it cooks, but that will be fine. I'm going to cut 
that piece off with that piece and we'll just fold in here now now which one was next that one was next there we go and we'll just tidy up those corners like that a bit of spare pastry there we could make a little jam tart if we want to okay so well that looks a bit messy to me so we'll see how that goes let's get it on the tray so yeah you could brush this with egg you could brush it with butter or syrup when it comes out I'm just going to use a little bit of milk I'm just going to wash it with a little bit of milk which will help it to go golden so that's going to go in a preheated oven 190 degrees for about probably 20 minutes and then we'll give it a check maybe half an hour in total okay well that's been there about half an hour let's check it out oh yeah I think that's done well do you know what considering the state that that was in when it went in I'm actually pretty happy with the outcome so we absolutely have to let that cool down before anything else but what I will just do quickly now we've got to be super careful because this is very very hot I'm just going to take it out of the tray just going to see yeah just run the thing under it there just to stop it sticking to the paper but yeah going to let that cool down a little bit before we even attempt to eat that but not a bad result okay well here we go let's give this a taste so gonna take a middle slice I think let's have a look at that well it stayed nicely full of fruit it looks good and I think with this we'll just have some vanilla custard so first I'm gonna just taste a bit with no custard so the fruits cooked down really nicely actually the apple and pear has almost become a puree and the berries the guavas have stayed more or less whole Hmm, okay, so I'm going to say that some of that interesting guava flavour has been lost in the cooking, which is a bit of a shame. So I would say probably the way to enjoy these fruits is really in a fruit salad or something like that. So, yeah, I'm happy enough with that. It's nice to be able to cook something with fruit grown in my own garden. So I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.